Well, good morning and welcome once again to Elevens. It's show number 232. It's Sunday the 17th of April and this is a recorded show. Nevertheless, I've got some uh, interesting stuff for you today. Uh, we have the story of the off-duty Sussex police officers who were involved in a collision. Uh, they have now received suspended sentences. Super fast bikes were apparently stolen from a globe of death. And a headline that certainly caught my attention. You can put a date in your diary. It's uh, the Debit MCN Festival of Motorcycling, which is coming up next month. Adjustable bar risers, uh, but they come at a price. And are there any counties not running a rider safety campaign? And we'll finish off with today's discussion point. I did mean to cover this uh, a week ago. Get your bike ready to ride. Quick tips for top performance. All from me of survival skills here today. Um, so set yourselves down for the next 30 minutes or so. And um, don't forget, if you have any comments, um, I'm more than happy to uh, answer them. Um, but they will be answered when I probably, when I get back. Uh, there may be a bit of a delay in me uh, responding, obviously, because this is a recording. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's crack on with the show. The first thing I just really want to talk about very quickly, uh, don't forget we are coming up on the uh, first Survival Schools Mini Ride Out. Now, I did propose these originally in 2019 um, for one reason and another. I never managed to get any organised at the end of that year. And, of course, my plans for 2020 were completely curtailed by lockdown. So I've decided I, I would relaunch them this year as we've got uh, four seasons biking in front of us. So the first of these uh, rides is going to take place on Saturday, the 23rd of April. Uh, 2022, obviously enough, at 10am. We'll be starting from St Albans. We'll be riding over the Chilterns, which is a beautiful scenic area to ride. Um, the idea is it'll be a gently paced ride. It'll be a modest distance. It's a small group. And the emphasis is on enjoying the ride and the scenery as much as anything else. Um, they're not designed for big groups and they're certainly not so uh, we're certainly not going to be hurtling around at high speed and uh, last point to make is that they are pre-book only so please don't try and turn up on the day with a bunch of mates because i won't let you on um right okay so that's uh, as i say is the saturday 23rd of april st albans 10 o'clock and go out riding across the chilterns for a few hours uh, see if you can join me then i'd be delighted if you could Right, okay, so uh, the story um, of the week really was uh, three police officers uh, now face misconduct proceedings after being given suspended prison sentences at Portsmouth Crown Court on Friday the 8th of April. Now back in March all three of them pleaded guilty to riding dangerously, two also admitted uh, speeding offences. And the case actually came about after a crash with a car in which two of the riders suffered injuries. PC James Latter was riding a GSXR 750 when he admitted the offence of riding dangerously near Chichester in July last year. PC Alan, Alan Harris also confessed to dangerous riding on the same stretch of road and also a second speeding offence on his Triumph Speed Triple. And PC Ahmet Yapikios was aboard a BMW R 1200 at the time of his offences. Sussex police have said the three riders, all off-duty police officers, were travelling towards Chichester around 1.20pm on Saturday 11th of July 2020, when two of them were involved in a collision with a red Ford Fiesta. The motorcyclists suffered multiple injuries and the driver of the car involved, an 80-year-old man from Chichester, and, had, and his passengers suffered minor injuries. So each of the three has been given a sentence uh, of nine months suspended. Um, they have uh, suspended for 18 months. They've also been given an 18-month driving disqualification and they will have to take an extended retest. Each has also been ordered to complete 200 hours, 200 hours of unpaid work and pay £500 costs and victim surcharge. Head of Roads Policing, Superintendent James Collis, who was previously 
based in the Brighton Hove area, said Sussex Police strives to keep people safe on our road and the reckless actions of these three individuals has caused harm to both themselves and others. They've rightly been held to account uh, for their behaviour and we will continue to take action against all those that break the law and endanger the lives of others. These police have failed to maintain the high standards Sussex Police expects of, it, of its officers on and off duty, and an internal misconduct investigation will now be completed. The outcomes at court should serve as a warning to all those that drive or ride with excessive speeding or antisocially that this comes with serious consequences for all involved. Right, okay, don't forget, um, you can catch up with this show uh, on YouTube. Um, the place to head is here um, on my YouTube channel, so, uh, which is Survival Skills UK. Don't forget that all important UK on the end. Um, the shows normally go out live. There are a few recorded shows in a row here, um, but they'll be back alive soon. And if you miss them, you're on Facebook, you can always catch up there, or you can head over to YouTube, as I say, where they're in a channel, so they're a little bit easier to find than they are on Facebook. Right, okay, so, uh, yeah, as I said, I um, the headline that really caught my attention this uh, the last few days was super fast bikes stolen from globe of death so naturally i couldn't actually restrain myself from clicking the link which uh, accompanied that headline um, particularly as it said that these super fast motorbikes could kill novice riders and uh, what's, ha what's happened is they've been stolen from this circus event. Now, apparently the bikes, uh, is basically, it is a globe and the bikes go round and round inside the globe. Um, it's kind of a, a, an extra dimension to the wall of death, I, I suppose. Um, and apparently the thieves lifted what they were described as high-powered super bikes, which could be fatal in the wrong hands, since they can go 0 to 100 miles per hour in a matter of seconds and should not be on the roads. So again, I was rather intrigued to find out what these uh, amazing motorcycles were. Were they using a Kawasaki H2 Turbo or something for this, uh, these stunts? Well, it turns out that the four uh, the missing machines are four CRF125 Hondas, a YZ250 Yamaha, and a Kawasaki KXF450. Uh, so, uh, so super fast? Well, I, I dare say the Kawasaki is a bit of a handful. It's a full-on motocross, so the YZ250 is probably a bit uh, sharper than uh, many riders would be useful, but I don't think that the CRF125 will be ripping up the pavement anytime soon. Um, but nevertheless, apparently these bikes are uh, especially modified to go at great speeds in a short space of time to allow the riders to somersault in midair. So my guess is that the gearing's been changed. I have to say I was also slightly baffled that a value of £60,000 has been placed on the, the these motorcycles. And the show organisers are actually offering a reward of £10,000 for the safe return of the bikes, which were taken from Circus Extreme at the Lakeside Shopping Centre on Monday night last week. Right, OK, um, so... If you want to go and see another motorcycle uh, event, then you'll be uh, more than welcome at the uh, MCN Devitt Festival of Motorcycling, which is back on at the East of England showground. Um, the date is um, set for... Here's the picture. I knew I had a picture somewhere. There it is. Um, not very exciting, but uh, anyway, that's, there it is. Uh, the date set for Saturday and Sunday, May the 14th and 15th, and uh, it's billed as one of the UK's largest outdoor shows. Uh, the organisers uh, state that it will be action-packed weekend of live music, non-stop racing at the live action arena, and jaw-dropping stunt displays. I wonder if they'll be having the globe of death there. Um, and on Saturday, um, if you've got cash to burn in the wallet. Silverstone Auctions will be putting a wide range of classic and contemporary road and race machines under the hammer. And on top of that, it says in the press blurb, there are hundreds of manufacturer test rides 
um, to be booked. So uh, tickets are now available on the MCN Festival website. You'll have to Google that because I can't put it up in the links. Visitors can book in advance at discounted prices. Standard adult tickets are £15. Kids go free. If you want to stay up there for the full two days, then camping is available for the weekend at £35 and it includes entry to the main show on both days as well as live music on Friday and Saturday nights. Well, I have to say, I suspect you probably um, have seen all of it before, long before the one day is out. I'm not sure that there's a, the claim about something for all the family uh, is entirely accurate either. I can think of a few of my family members who would probably rather stick their head in a bucket of sand than go watch motorcycles. But hey-ho, we all have our different preferences. Now, don't forget, if you do enjoy these shows, please do pop over to my coffee page. Uh, if you drop me a coffee over there, I'll be mighty grateful. Keeps me coming back and doing more of them. Um, and of course you do get the access to the huge, huge um, archive of former Facebook posts over on coffee. So do pop over there. Um, Three pounds gets me a coffee and it gets you a month's access to 800 better biking articles. Now, um, the Yamaha's XJ6 diversion falls into what I would say is probably the, the trusty workhorse classification. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, even though I ride it um, and I enjoy I, I enjoy it as a bike, it's not desperately an exciting machine. My 600 Hornet would leave it for dead in a straight line and the uh, my old GSX-R 750 would uh, see it off quite easily too. Um, neither is it the best handling machine in the world, though a YSS rear shock transplant has significantly improved matters at the rear um, and it's not really super economical either typically I get around about 55 mpg from the bike um, which means it uses around about 25% more fuel than the not too dissimilar uh, NC 750X but when I bought it it was having it was advertised as having two bar um, positions that you could adjust between so of course one of the first things i had to do having got hold of the bike was to try adjusting them to see what the difference was and i have to be perfectly honest having um, turned the risers around the other way i could barely notice the difference so all you do is slack take the bars off uh, slacken the, the lock nut on the risers rotate them the other way they're slightly higher in the reverse direction and then you put pop the bars back in slightly further away too um, so yeah, it's hardly a game changer in terms of riding position, really. And that's one of the problems with motorcycles generally. Whilst manufacturers spend a fortune on R and D to put a new bike on the road, um, each motorcycle is actually designed around one rider, the test rider, in terms of size and shape. So not surprisingly, one of the first things that uh, many riders do, having got a new bike, is to head off to the Arkema aftermarket catalog where they'll where they'll be looking for. Um, things like replacement levers to change the reach out to the brake or clutch. Um, they may swap seats to make the bike a little bit higher or lower in the seat. Um, there are foot peg adjusting kits around to deal with people with uh, legs of different lengths. And of course, one of the favorite uh, things and relatively cheap and easy ones to do is change the screen height. So you change the airflow depending on how tall you are and where your helmet is in the, uh, in the, in the, the, the shadow of the screen. Um, so yes, it is possible to change the risers, um, but essentially, um, once you've changed them, these changes are fixed. It still only fits you. So I was quite interested to see uh, some variable position risers on the market. And uh, let me put those up for you as well. There they are. Um, the These are from uh, the German aftermark specialist SW Motor tech and uh, they basically retain the standard bars uh, there are a range of different of uh, risers which have different diameters uh, so they can you can fit different bars on them and they adjust through seven positions uh, each of which are five millimeters apart which basically offers you 30 millimeters of total movement um, 
Now, one of the pluses of these is that they are relatively simple to fit, but you do need to be aware of one issue that the advertising, of course, fails to mention. You need sufficient slack in all the wires and cables, and you need the ability to route them so they don't interfere with anything else to get the full range of fore and aft movement. You should be able to, I would have thought, but don't bank on it. Um, I saw remember fitting a set of fully adjustable Jota bars to my old 400 Honda. Um, these allowed you to rotate the ends of the handlebars, sort of not only backwards and forwards, but also up and down as well. So you could get infinite adjustability, but having discovered they had infinite adjustability, I found that they actually worked in one position on my 400, and that was basically where the original bars were. So that's, that's where they ended up after a lot of fiddling around. Um, so anyway, I was still wonder, uh, wondering idly if they would be a good buy because um, it happens that when I'm riding two up, I prefer a slightly more upright riding position because it gives just a little bit more leverage on the handlebars with the extra weight. But it's so low, I'd prefer to be just a little bit further lent forwards. Um, so I did take a look at them, but there's one thing that puts me off, and that's the price tag. 170 euros, just over 140 pounds at the current price. And frankly, for two bits of aluminium, even if they are precision engineered, that is just far too much money. Right, so um, the time of year, of course, we're all getting back out on the bikes. And so it's also relaunched all the rider safety campaigns. And actually, um, quite surprisingly, uh, some of these only appeared in my news feed um, too late to actually warn me about the safety campaign. So um, I missed the one aimed at riders in Hertfordshire, which of course is one of the regions I run training courses and where our little ride out will be headed in just a few weeks time. Um, the Two Wheels Initiative from Hertfordshire saw road police officers out and about on patrol between April 11th and 17th. So that one's just finishing today. And although there were no specifics about exactly how they were planning to interact with motorcycles, the force said they were keen to remind the people about the law when it came to e-scooters, uh, giving advice where possible, but taking action where necessary. West Mercia Police, the area around Warwickshire to you and me, uh, are urging all motorists to share the road responsibly to reduce the number of collisions involving motorcycles and bicycles. It's all part of the National Police Chiefs Council campaign, which aims to raise awareness amongst all road users to improve driver behaviour when sharing the road with those on two wheels. But of course, there's an, an educational element uh, where they will be talking about having the correct skills, knowledge and personal protective equipment, um, which seems to be via the usual operations to enforce compliance of road traffic regulations and improve rider driver behavior. That was uh, how they described it. Um, meanwhile, down in the far southwest, East Devon has also been running a motorcycle awareness week. That one also finishes today. Sunday 17th. Now, rather than the police, this time it's um, Devon and Somerset Fire and Rescue Service uh, who are hoping that their week of action can reduce the numbers of riders injured and killed in motorcycle incidents by giving bikers advice on riding safely and reducing the chances of being in a collision. And riders are being encouraged to sign up for the free biker down sessions they offer there. Um, and I just they remind you that the three hour course provides practical and potentially life saving advice on what to do if they're in, uh, involved with or see an injured motorcyclist, as well as highlighting the importance of motorcycle maintenance and the wearing of legal and protective riding gear. Okay, so it's a bit of a different angle on the biker down. Um, I also missed the Cumbria campaign, which also ran from April 11th until April 17th. And this one is also fire service led. This is Cumbria. And again, uh, once again, they are pushing a biker down. Um, that course is now led uh, by the National Fire Chiefs Council. Um, it was originally, of course, um, a homegrown event that we came up with down in Kent, uh, myself helping out uh, James Sanderson, the firefighter in Kent, who put it together originally. Um, it went national. More and more services picked it up on a, on a voluntary basis. And having got to the point where the, uh, they could no longer ignore it, and which is really what happened, uh, some of the fire service chiefs weren't actually very supportive at all. Um, but it got to the point where there were so many places uh, offering it, they really had to bring it under their own umbrella. 
Um, so I've been a, a, a life time supporter of biker down ever since the very first course um, because i was one of the team working on those original pilot schemes in kent so i put the science of being seen module together for them and uh, despite having been fairly un unceremoniously dumped by uh, Kent Fire and Rescue. I'd still say that Biker Down is a great example of the kind of engagement that really can deliver genuinely valuable advice and information to riders. Um, but having created Science of Being Seen, I was rather disappointed to see that Cumbria seemed to have returned to the old make yourself visible by having working lights on your bike and wearing appropriate attire um, information. I don't know if that's aimed more at cyclists and motorcyclists, but um, uh, it's the sort of thing that I've been trying to explain hasn't worked in the past and is unlikely to work in the future. Um, so did I miss any safety campaigns? Maybe you can let me know if I did. Now, um, moving on to the final part of the show. Um, um, a week or so ago, I did actually cover um, some mental exercises and physical exercises to help riders get um, fit for the new riding campaign. And I did say that I would include a second uh, segment of this information on YouTube uh, on, and Facebook via Elevenses. Now, for one reason or another, it did happen a little bit later than planned. It was meant to go out a week ago. But uh, here, uh, even if it is now after Easter, here are some checks that it's probably worth doing. So even if you've ridden your bike in the last few days, um, I would still go back and do some of these checks. Now, clean your bike, first of all. Um, did you clean it before putting it away? Uh, it's always a good idea if you do, because it tends to help prevent corrosion if you then spray the bike with a protective spray of some sort. But if you didn't do it, do it now because you can find any corrosion that's starting to bite and you can nip it in the bud. Um, cleaning is actually also a really good way of helping spot, them, spot random problems. Um, you know, it's the sort of thing where you spot a loose nut or a bolt. And uh, you can also, if you start clean, taking the seat off and having a good look under what's uh, under the seat, you'll find the mouse that nested in the airbox over winter and anything else that may generally appear out of order. So it's always a good idea to start at the front of a bike and go round to the rear. Um, so what I tend to do is start at the front tyre, um, work round the front wheel, checking things like spokes, front wheel bearings, um, check the pads for um, depth, make sure that they have plenty of material. Uh, make sure that the wheel is spinning freely too. If there's any kind of drag on the front wheel, um, you've likely got binding pads. I'll come on, um, come on to that in just a moment. But then you can move up the bike forks and steering head bearings and through to the bike. So the sort of things that I would be doing um, up on the handlebars is checking the brake fluid level. Um, have a look at the coolant level as well. You may find that um, in some weird places behind, uh, on the XJ6, the coolant bottle is actually behind the um, exhaust header pipes, which is um, extremely difficult to get to. Actually, it's impossible to see because it's always dirty um, from road spray, and it's very difficult to actually top up. Um, the Hornet's much more conveniently placed under the seat, but uh, have a, you know, find out where yours is and do check it. Um, and then before you ride the bike, do make sure that anything you have sprayed onto it is cleaned off. Um, it's surprisingly easy to get um, these sprays on tyres, and then the first time you, you try and tip the bike into a corner, you'll find that uh, they won't stick to the road. So... Do check tyre pressures too. That's an obvious one. Um, after four months, they almost certainly have lost a couple of PSI at least, get them pumped up and then move on to the brakes themselves. Now, as I said, there's a fair chance if your bike lives outside, the calipers will have partly seized over winter. Now, it's easy to ride away on a powerful machine and be completely oblivious to the fact the brakes are dragging. Now, if you don't do anything about that very, very quickly indeed, you will do some serious damage. You'll wear the pads out for sure, but you will start to overheat the disc. And if the disc gets too hot, it will warp. And then the only way forward from there is to replace the disc. And I'll tell you, that's not a cheap um, thing to do. I've had to do a uh, warped disc on a, the GSXR in the past. Previous owner had ridden it with a seized rear brake, clearly, and the uh, it was bent as a banana, the back brake on that bike. Um, so if you know what you're doing, um, 
get the calipers off, give everything a good uh, clean up and reassemble. If you're not happy, you know what you're doing, get somebody else to do it, but don't ride around with brakes that are dragging. You'll know if they are because the bike will be difficult to push at a standstill. Um, right, battery and electrics. Um, check the battery. Um, if it works, fine. If it doesn't, consider a lithium ion replacement. Um, if it's completely discharged, the chances of you being able to put it on a, uh, a battery tender type thing um, and get it charged up are pretty remote, actually. Um, check the bulbs as well. Um, a lot of riders now don't bother to check bulbs very often. Um, I have to admit my pilot light bulb blew just before I parked the bike up for the winter and I had forgotten that and, and uh, it turned up of course on my quick check the other week before my MOT. Um, that was a mammoth effort to change it which is a, another story altogether. Um, a squirt of contact cleaner into the switch gear won't go amiss either. They do get dirty. Um, you find things like spiders will nest in there as well. So if you find that your indicator switch which isn't working properly, maybe disassemble it, give it a good clean out, get any oh, wildlife out from there, give it a good um, polish if the contacts are corroded, and give it a squirt of contact cleaner before you put it all back together again. Oils and filter. Um, well, it's always a good idea if you didn't do it before you park the bike up to change the oil and filter uh, fairly soon after you uh, get back on the bike. It probably has got water in it that should evaporate off, but um, it's not a bad time to get the fresh oil and a filter in, then you won't have to worry about it in quite so quickly next uh, in this coming season. Um, a chain, likewise, hopefully you lube the chain before you put the bike away, but do check it. Something I find um, is that with the bike parked outside, even with a good cover on it, uh, the condensation and occasionally the rain, when the rain's horizontal, does get onto the chain and it may need lubing even if it was lubed before it was parked. So if you do that, check it again for tension a few miles after you've ridden it. Um, I'd also check the visor on the helmet, make sure it's in good nick. Um, if it's the start of the evening ride out season now, it's not getting dark till getting on for half eight. So the sun will be low in the sky while you're out on these rides and scratches really don't help us see. And finally, fuel. Um, we've been hearing a lot about E10 fuel over the last few months. Um, if the bike has been standing with E10 fuel in it, I would suggest that you think seriously about draining it before you even try to start the bike and refilling with E5, which has less of the ethanol in it. Um, if you do try to run it and it has separated, which unfortunately is the problem with the ethanol 10 fuel, it turns it turns into sort of jelly. You could end up clogging the fuel injectors or carb jets and that'll probably make it run a bit rough um, I have to say even though my bike was parked with E5 in it it's a little was a little bit rough when I started it up but running it with E5 fuel for a few tankfuls should clear it through well and you, don't, you shouldn't really need to use any of these expensive engine treatments They're a little bit snake oily I always think um, but if the bike does continue to stutter you may need to strip down and clean out the injectors or even carbs right okay that's it for today fairly short show because um as i say it's a recorded one um but um yep yeah, do come along and um see me about some bike training um it's all happening now i'm got a full order book for when I get back from my short break towards the end of the month and I'm definitely taking bookings now right into May when the weather really should be warming up and getting nice and reliable and don't forget as soon as the evenings lengthen out and we'll be using the time for evening training too how many schools do you know run evening training right that is it for today thank you very much again for looking in um if you have any comments, feedback on the show, I'm delighted to hear it, but I will be uh, dealing with it at a later date, obviously, as this is a recording. And final thing to say, um, next show will also be a recording. So I'll be seeing you live, I think, in two shows from now. Anyway, if you're out there and about on the bike today, uh, enjoy your ride, but do stay shiny side up. <laughs>